be showing y'all how to make cold processed soap. Um, there are three main ways to make soap. Um, cold process is one of those, and that's the um, technique I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be making lavender oatmeal scrubbing soap. Okay, so um, a few things I want to go over with you is what we're going to be using. Now, lye is a caustic substance, so that means if it gets on your skin, it can burn you. So, if you're unfamiliar with how to use this technique, I would recommend either wearing a long sleeve shirt and some gloves and some glasses so that you don't get splattered on. Um, I'm very, have been in the past very careful. I've been making this type soap for about two and a half years now. Um, but always keep vinegar on hand because vinegar is a neutralizer to lye. So um, if you do get it on your hands or splash you or get it on your countertops or whatever, always neutralize it with vinegar. So always keep that on hand. I'm going to be using an olive oil and coconut oil as my base oil. I'm going to put this recipe, my recipe, um, down in the description, but the first thing I want us to do is get started with mixing our water and our lye solution. So you're going to need a heat resistant container. Um, now this heats up very hot. So you're going to need a thermometer and a heat resistant container. And I'm going to do one pound and eight ounces of water. Let me set my skill to zero. I'm looking for one pound and eight ounces of water. Okay, one pound and eight ounces. Another very important thing to remember, very important, always add your lye to your water. Here's a tilt to help you remember if you don't get it wrote down. Add water to lye and you die. Not really, but it will make a very big mess, not something that you want. So always add your lye to your water, never water to lie. So put your water in first, then you're going to add your lie to that. So the next thing I need to do is get my lie measured out. And I'm going to use a styrofoam cup since I'm putting this lie in this. When I get done, I want to chunk this. So I'm using a styrofoam cup. And I want 9.7 ounces of lye. Now, I bought my lye online and I bought it in bulk. So I've had this particular, these particular bottles for a really long time and I'm making a four pound batch. So the recipe that I'm gonna be adding in the description is gonna be a four pound batch. And I only make soap about every two or three months by making a four pound batch. When you put your lye into your water, the first thing it's going to do is fumigate. So you, want, you do not want to be in a 
small room, you want to be in a large room with good ventilation. And every time I pour my light in, I always stand back and I don't breathe in those fumes. And you want to stir it well. And you can see, if you cannot see, can you get a little bit closer and see, can you see that steam? Can you see it on the camera? Not really. There is a good amount of steam that's coming up off the top of this because it does heat up very hot. It gets very hot. So, this... I'm gonna check the temperature just to show you how hot it is. And while this is cooling, we are gonna be shooting for a temperature. Let me get a. We're gonna be shooting for a temperature of 110 degrees. Now, temperature and soap making, there's a lot of things that I do, like yogurt, things like that, where temperature is not really that big of a deal. Temperature and soap making is very, very important. The next thing we're going to go over and do is mix our oils. So I'm going to melt down my coconut oil. We're going to measure that out. I'm going to melt down my olive oil. We're going to measure that. I mean, I'm going to heat up my coconut oil, get those two things mixed together and get them up to my temperature. Now, if you mix your oils and your water life solution too soon, it's going to cause your soap to seize. And I have, unfortunately, I've had that happen to me in my um, two and a half years of soap making and that's not what you want it, you, it ruins your soap and that's because your temperatures have been mixed too quickly and your soap um, doesn't go through the full saponification process and it immediately begins to clump up so you don't get your oils and your lye completely blended together well enough before it starts clumping together um, if you, if the temperature is not warm enough, your soap won't sit up. It won't, um, you want your soap to be hard. You're going to make, you're making hard soap. So if your temperatures are not warm enough, um, it will stay liquid and your soap will never form. So temperature and soap making is very, very important. So let me get the temperature on this to show you how hot this gets. We're at 180, 190, to almost 200 degrees. So that's how hot this water and lye solution gets. And it's gonna take about 45 minutes to cool off. So if there's anything I need to go do, I'll go do that. And I will just be back and forth checking my solution. Um, I'm going to wipe this area up quickly with some vinegar and um, then we're going to go over and measure out our olive oil and coconut oil. I've got some castor oil which is another part of the process. So um, we're going to let this cool while we're doing our next steps. Okay so now I have moved over here to my other station which is going to be melting my coconut oil down and measuring it out and measuring out my olive oil and I will I'm, then I'm going to combine those oils and um, let them warm up so right now I'm letting my line water cool down and I'm going to let my oils warm up so I will be back and forth checking the oils until I get them at 110 degrees um, and I know there are different some people will take your oils and add them straight to your lye um, and just kind of let the saponification start in that process. However, I like to blend mine when the temperature is right where it's supposed to be. Um, now, I don't get into the colorants and the different types of um, soap molds, and I know that lavender mixes well with a lye. Um, you can get into issues there with um, your essential oils and your lies having different reactions in the soap so I make a very basic and um, easy 
there's no colorants or, or we don't do molds and I don't do the different techniques to get my soap to look a certain way. Um, it's just very basic. So um, this is a great, something great for beginners. Um, and this is what I've always done. So I want, I'm shooting for a goal in my four pound batch of a pound and five ounces of coconut oil. So I am going to be guesstimating here. I'm just going to be guesstimating because ultimately I want this exact. So I'm going to melt this down. So let's shoot for this, and we're gonna be letting this melt while I measure out my olive oil. Okay, so I'm gonna let this melt down to a liquid state because I wanna measure this in a liquid state, and I've just got it on low, okay? I don't want this getting real hot, um, so I've just got this on low, but it's gonna melt slow. Now, my olive oil, I am shooting for two pounds and 10 ounces. So two pounds and 10 ounces. Two point, I mean, two nine point three. I want two ten. Almost, almost. Almost, almost. Okay, two pounds and ten ounces. So I'm also going to turn this on low. And let this be warming up. So as our last cooling down, our oils are warming up. I'm gonna go check on the temperature of the lye just so we can see where that's at. Okay, our lye was still at 160 degrees and it's probably been sitting on the counter for about 15 minutes. So we still have some time to go on that. But our coconut oil has completely melted down. So I'm gonna measure this now that it's in a liquid state because I want my measurements to be as close to accurately as possible. So I want one pound and five ounces. And I'm gonna need 
just a little bit more at one pound five ounces so we're going to go ahead and mix this i've got my liquid measurements exactly to the recipe and we want this at 110 degrees so our lies cooling down and our oils are warming up and we want them to both be at 110 when we mix them so we are only at <laughs> about 95 degrees so we're gonna let this now it is very very hard once oil gets really hot it's very hard to cool oil down so we are going to let this stay on low warm for just a few more minutes and then I'm gonna cut it off and I will, I can fluctuate the temperatures just coming back and forth. If it starts to cool off, I'll put it back on heat. If it starts to get to my temperature, I'll pull it off because oil's gonna hold its heat for a little while. So now that I have my lye cooling down and my oil's warming up, I need to work on my super fat. <laughs> okay, sorry, I got tickled. We're, we're pretty sleepy because, um, we took turns staying up through the night last night with our baby, so um, <laughs> it's a good thing that Colby didn't go to sleep during church this morning. <laughs> so we're getting tickled. Uh, anyway, now we need to move. Maybe that'll help wake you up. Um, I need to do my super fat. And typically, um, if you ever make a bigger batch than uh, your four pounds, uh, general rule with that is a tablespoon per pound of um, batch of soap. So I'm making four pounds, so I'm gonna need four tablespoons of <clears throat> castor oil, and we're gonna go measure that out. Okay, so I have castor oil, and I need four tablespoons of that, so I'm gonna measure that out first. Okay, and I am adding oatmeal to mine. This is, I just store it in this little old yogurt container. And I just have your regular rolled oats that you buy. And I put mine in a processor and blended them down. So I want four tablespoons of this and four tablespoons of my lavender as well. This makes a great, not only is oatmeal great for the skin anyway, but the, the pieces that you feel on here once it gets into the soap, it makes such a wonderful this is one of my husband's probably, Colby's probably favorite thing about the oatmeal soap is that it makes such an awesome scrub. And we're gonna need four tablespoons of lavender, which is one of my favorite scents. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I use a very basic recipe um, that was handed down to me and I know that lavender and lye do not have any type of um, reaction to each other so if you want to experiment with other essential oils um, you really have to do your research because 
Um, it can make your soap do all kinds of crazy things from changing color to changing the whole chemical process of the soap. So if you want to do something different as far as essential oils go, you really have to do your research and make sure you're not going to have a crazy reaction. So. Okay, so I just measured my oils after I got through making my additives that we're going to add in. Um, our oils over there are ready. So they're at 110. I've just slid them off the, the stove. So I'm just going to leave them there for the time being. But our lye is still a good 140. So this just has to continue to cool. So I'm going to go do anything else around the house that I need to. But just keep a very close eye on my temperatures because we're at the part now that's going to make your soap or make your soap not turn out at all. So you really have to be careful on those temperatures. Um, so I'll keep a close eye on both of those. Okay, I've got both of my um, mixtures at 110. So I want my oil to go in first. And I'm going to be mixing this in a stainless steel container. And the process that we're about to do is going known as saponification. And it's where your lye and your oils are going to mix together. And we're looking for something called trace. And if you're not familiar with trace yet, what the if you're not familiar with what trace means, then um, I will show you. So I'm gonna, my oils are in there, I'm gonna slowly mix this live because I don't want it to splash on me. And I'm going to put this in my sink with the vinegar in it. And I have a hand stick blender and I'm gonna get this going in my pot. And you can see right now that we're at a full liquid state. I want this to get to trace. And when I can pick my stick up and move it around and have a trace of liquid on top, it's done. trace doesn't look like. I am moving my stick around and I cannot see the outline of my soap. So I need to keep this going. Okay, so I just checked this and you can see that this is thickening up and it's almost there, but it's not quite tracing yet. I want this to go a little bit longer, so we're gonna go just a little bit longer. We're at Trace. So you might not have a good view of it from the phone, but if I kind of level that back out and pick this up, you can see, I can see my marks on top. Can you see that? I can faintly see my marks on top. So at Trace, I want to add my castor oil 
a lavender oil and my um, oatmeal at this time. And I'm gonna mix that in very well. So you, I can't get this off. There we go, I have too much oil on my hands. So because this has not sat up, you still have a lye mixture. So this needs to go in my vinegar um, until I'm ready to clean that up. Now I have um, just recently, if you don't have these, that's okay. I've just recently pur purchased these and I've probably used them the past three or four times that I've made soap and I really, really like them. But if you don't have anything like this, just a regular um, glass baking dish is what I have used for years. And I spray it down with um, olive oil or you can take a little bit of olive oil on your hands and rub it on that glass. Um, there's lots of different ways um, I just always use that because it's what I had available um, until I really got to where I wanted something to um, make so that my soaps could be prettier, more presentable to sell, I guess you could say. So you can see that my soap is now thick and it is absolutely beautiful. Remember, try not to splash yourself. You are still working with live solution. Now what I want to do, we just worked hard for the soap, right? So I'm going to tap this down and try to get all the air out of there. And I'm going to scrape the rest of my soap out and get it in there. So I can get as much out of the soap as I can. And guys, please remember to be careful because you are working with the lie again and it will burn you if you're not extremely careful. And for a long time, I wore long sleeves and gloves until I kind of have learned the process and I know what to expect. Okay, now this will be cleaned with vinegar. So I want to tap these again and get these as smooth as I can because you will be able to see this part of your soap. Now I do have a soap cutter too that has tremendously helped um, my soap, but it it's if this is for you at home, it really is just as easy as getting a knife and cutting it into bars and. Um, it works just the same as your store-bought soap. So, I still have some heat in this. So what I wanna do with my soap now is I want to cover it up with some 
saran wrap. I'm gonna cover it up. I'm gonna place it in um, my laundry room because we are not in there too much. The kids are not in there too much and I don't want them to be, met, to be messed with. So what I'm gonna do now is cover them with saran wrap, take them in my laundry room and I'm gonna put a towel over my soap because I want it to hold this heat for as long as possible. Tomorrow, I'm gonna check my soap. Um, sometimes I can cut it the day after. Sometimes I wait two days. So you're gonna check your soap for consistency to see how easy it is to get out of this um, silicone mold. And once you can get it out, uh, then you can cut your soap up at that point. So it'll just be where you need to check it if your soap is still a little sticky or um, you can touch it and it, it it's still kind of squishy. You need to wait until it hardens up a little bit more. Um, and that is pretty much the gist of soap making. Um, like I said, I make a very basic. Um, there are so many different techniques that you can learn, but this is your basic soap making. Um, with your basic ingredients and our family loves it. We know what we put on our skin and that is why I do what I do. So, okay guys, this is the next morning and um, you can see that I've gotten my soap out of my molds. Here's my soap cutter, my soap is done. So the only thing that I have left to do is come in And like I mentioned yesterday, if you don't have this, it's just as easy as cutting it with a, a knife. And I have soap. Now this is not ready to use. This soap needs to sit for about four to six weeks. And it's still a little squishy and you'll be able to tell that. So just get you a little place. I have a little basket in my bathroom that I stack my soaps um, and they will sit for four to six weeks. And as soon as those four to six weeks, you can pick them up and you will be able to feel how hard they are and then they will be ready to use. And that is the entire soap making process. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy homesteading y'all.